Welcome to the first episode of the NFT Developer Diary series. My name is Kyle. I'm the creator of the Boo Crew CNFT universe, and I'm happy to announce I've partnered with NFT Maker Pro to host this series. The idea behind this is to show you in detail how I created the Boo Crew and how you can use the knowledge I've gained and use NFT Maker Pro to bring your projects to life. I hope it inspires you. I hope the detail I go in really helps you to solve these problems that you may face on your journey. And above all else, I hope you have fun with it. You know, this is a very new space and one of the biggest barriers to entry is simply the fact that naturally, because of how new it is, there's just not that much information out there on how to do things. So in this series, we're gonna try and bridge the gap and let's get that done. I'm gonna be taking through you through the end-to-end -end process, right the way from creating the initial concepts of the ghosts here, all the way to setting up the minting vending machine, as I'm sure you've seen on many other projects. This one in particular, Boo Crew Series A, is a collection of 10,000 hand-drawn, but procedurally assembled images. So that means that we've drew all of the assets, but they're built and they're put together by a program. You know, come on, there's 10,000 of them doing that one by one by hand would be <laughs> impressive to say the least. So I hope you all join me on this journey. I hope you have a good time and I'll see you in the rest of the video. Cheers. Before we get into any of that, we need to look at what is an NFT and therefore what is a CNFT. An NFT is a non-fungible token. All right. This is one of those words that I don't think we ever really needed until now um, because the idea of fungibility was like the default, right? So think about fungible as though you have uh, one pound coin is equal in value. It's in identical for all intents and purposes as any other pound coin. So you personally won't mind which pound out of the many, many pounds that are out there in the world you have. And this becomes especially true when we start to look at money in, you know, in your bank account. We don't even know which digital pounds we have. And, and actually, that doesn't make any sense. So key point is fungible means interchangeable. The difference with NFTs are they're non-fungible. So the idea is that you have an asset that is on the same blockchain, but they're not interchangeable. So for example, this is how it became very interesting for art because you want uniqueness, right? So it's the idea that the tokens are unique. Now, a Cardano NFT in particular has a similar, or I think it's kind of pushed that concept a bit further. And Cardano as a blockchain has something called native assets, all right? I want you to think about these as nothing more than data listed on the blockchain, but this data isn't related to the native token, which is ADA, it's another native asset. All right, so what happens is with a CNFT, when that, when that gets minted, what's actually happening is a bit of data is being pushed to the blockchain, stored on the blockchain, and within that data point, it is associated or owned by, if you will, a given wallet address. Now, within that data packet, you can kind of put anything you want, but the key thing is there's two there's two key parts. It has a policy ID, which is a unique identifier um, for the entire policy. Now, you can mint multiple CNFTs under the same policy. Um, so that's one part. The other part is you can put metadata in there. So the way ultimately these CNFTs work in terms of art is that the native asset, which is a minted and allocated to a wallet, it has a policy ID to confirm it's the real whatever it's claiming to be. And then within the metadata, that points to an image which is stored on IPFS, which is the interplanetary file system. So essentially, if we zoom out, Think if you want to absolutely simplify it as far as you can, all we're saying is there's some data. In that data is a literally a website address 
that website address points to an image which is on the internet and because that wallet has that with that link in it and it has the, the real policy ID, they are the owner of that NFT. Uh, but what I, what I really, really want to get across is, you know, when people are saying things like, oh, you can just download the JPEG, you can, but that isn't what the NFT is. The NFT is that data on the blockchain that points to the image that's verified on the blockchain and authenticated by the related policy ID. And that's the key point I want to get across. Now we've got that out of the way, I want to talk a bit more about why NFT Maker Pro. So if you're like me, you want to do this. It was technically a challenge, but there's certain elements that you want to learn. Maybe you, you know, have longer goals for it. Maybe you want to get started quite quickly. You know, as someone doing a project, you need to pick the areas that you want to do yourself based on your skill set, your time constraints and all that kind of thing. And so NFT Maker Pro really is perfect for this. So if you see along the bottom rail here, I've split these parts into what you have to do and what NFT Maker Pro handles. The first thing I want to stress is they are essentially letting you use their Cardano node to directly mint native assets on the blockchain. So the first thing it does, and this is huge, is you don't have to set up a Cardano node or any of that kind of thing. You don't have to download the entire Cardano transaction ledger. You don't have to do any of that because they're handling that for you. They've got one. In fact, they might have multiple by the time you're watching this. Um, the key thing is that's done for you. now. Only Cardano nodes can mint NFTs. So it's not like if you just got a wallet, you can mint one. This is a necessary part that if you weren't using NFT Maker Pro, you would have to handle. The next part is, you remember I said before about IPFS? Well, um, as part of the project that I'm gonna show you how it all works, you upload your image files to NFT Maker Pro using a very simple API and what this allows you to not need to do is manage all of those web addresses um, and the specific hashes and links to the files, which are then stored on IPFS for you by NFT Maker Pro. And that's really, really important because again, it would be another thing you would have to handle. You'd have to deal with managing that. And then when it comes to minting, you would need to somehow be able to, and I, again, I'm not saying that's impossible, I'm just saying that it's one less thing you have to think about, all right? So it handles selecting and all of that kind of key stuff. Um, finally, metadata. So associating that metadata with a given image and its location on IPFS, all handled by NFT Maker Pro. And finally, going back to what I said earlier about the policy IDs, the policy IDs are generated and handled all for you again by NFT Maker Pro. So all of the real blockchain side essentially is dealt with for you. That leaves you with two essential goals, right? Generate the art and the, of course the actual data related to it. So, you know, for example, this guy here, you can see a happy little boo, he's white. He has the cheeky smile. He's got the gold crown and he's got the castle background. So generating both that image and the associated data with it, if you want to, you have to do that. And you also have to set up the front end, which is normally a website for people to actually go and mint them. But when I say that, it's merely the fact you need them to be able to click a button to do it, right? The actual minting process is handled completely by NFT Maker, as long as you can send them the request to do it. And that's what we're gonna get done. Now, to go in further detail about the logical overview, the pre-minting stage is really, really key. So remember before we were saying about getting those images on IPFS? Well, what you essentially do is load them in using an API, um, and you can do this in various programming languages. I used Python, and that's something I'll get into more detail about later in the series. Um, NFT Maker Pro then loads that media 
onto IPFS, stores it, and deals with like linking up that metadata with that image so that when the minting comes around, it's all done smoothly and it's all like connected together. So for example, if they didn't do this for you, you would have to write some software that made sure that when a um, when someone went to mint, say this this red boo here, the the correct set of metadata to say that he's got the red body, the green wizard hat, the big smiley face, that was all lined up. All right, so it does that for you as well. Now during minting, as I said before. We want to be in a situation where we, you know, we give the user a simple experience where they can click a button or something maybe even more simple than that. And essentially that makes a call to the API, as we said. Now, the way that actually works in practice for Boo Crew, and this is the way I'm going to go over with you guys, is, is as follows. So on our home screen, you will see buttons for mint one, two, five, or 10. And essentially, when the user clicks either of those buttons, I'm going to talk about when they click one for this part, several things happen. The first thing is when the number one button is clicked, an API call is made back to NFT Maker Pro that says, hi, we would like to reserve one boo at this price. Okay. NFT Maker Pro on its back end automatically then does the following things. It selects a boo at random from the collection that are not minted yet. It selects a random wallet address. It has a, a huge amount of wallets that it can that it uses for this purpose. And it locks those two for 20 minutes. All right. So what it then does is it starts to listen for the incoming amount of ADA to mint them. So for example, um, if Boo Crew was set at nine ADA each, it would then reserve a random Boo. So for example, we've got the Cyan one with the red beret. He would get reserved on the back end. A wallet address would get associated with him and it would then listen for nine ADA to be received. And this is what we show here. Then it sends back to our website, that wallet address that got reserved, the price and the time, well, so and the expiry time. Okay, so um, I set it to 20 minutes, and this is what it will do. It's then It then does that listening process. It's then down to the user to look at what comes up on the screen, which would be, again, that wallet address, an amount of ADA, and as long as they send that amount of ADA to that wallet address in the time limit, it will mint them and it will send them to the sender wallet, right? So the user's wallet. So there you go. And this is what we see here. So user then sees it on the computer. They load up their wallet. It could be your OI. It has to be a proper Cardano wallet. You can't do it from an exchange. Um, but yeah, they send the amount of ADA to the wallet that it's told them to. And then if it's correct, uh, NFT maker then mints the one at random behind the scenes and then sends it to that person who sent the ADA. And the key thing, uh, final huge, huge feature that I think gets overlooked is that NFT Maker Pro also handles overpayments, um, expiries. You know, you remember I said 20 minutes, so if someone sends it over that time, um, it handles underpayments, overpayments. If they sell out or anything like that, all that's dealt with and people are refunded automatically. So you as the developer don't need to you know, concern yourself with that, which I think is a huge selling point. What I really wanna to touch on here is the target audience for this video. Okay, so you're probably looking at that, you think that's really complex or hopefully you're like, ha, that isn't even hard, which, you know, that'd be fantastic. And what I'm gonna really push on in here is I'm gonna try and blend the overall with the real niche specific stuff that honestly tripped me up for a lot of hours. There's a lot of things, as I'm sure many of you all know in writing code, that literally can be solved by one line being typed correctly. But if you don't know what that line is or you try it a slightly different way, it just fails. I'm gonna really push to highlight as many of those little parts as I can 
that I experienced while I was learning this. Having said that, you're probably going to want quite good coding skills to do this. Using NFT Maker Pro certainly reduces the difficulty by, by a great margin, but, you know, some background with writing software before or, you know, a, a general willingness to learn will go a really long way with this. And, you know, if you're going to drop one of these projects, you're going to need a lot of passion for it anyway, and that should really help you to get this over the line. Having said that, thank you all very much for watching. In the next episode, we're going to be looking at your project choice, how you make that decisions, how you decide what you're going to do. We're going to go through all of that, looking at how I did it for Boo Crew, so that you can do it too. Thank you very much.